All right, let's take a brief look at the Romer electrical package. Uh, as you know, as uh, components change, when things are in stock or out of stock, we do th change things around a little bit, but wanted to give a brief introduction of how the entire system works. So we're gonna start at the AC side of things. We're gonna walk our way through the system and see how we can maybe apply for your overlanding adventures. We are gonna start Come on down with me, Kenny. Come on down. Come on down here. Don't mind as I crouch down. We are going to start with a 30 amp shore power marine grade plug. It comes in black, white, or stainless steel. It goes from your 30 amp RV plug up into a 30 amp breaker. This is a very simple on off blue sea breaker. It goes from there into your inverter. This is 110 in into the inverter. We have a multi plus two, 3000 watt inverter up here for display. Um, most of the time in overland applications, we are going to use the generation one of this because it's a little smaller and a little fatter and fits really nice behind you rear. I couldn't say it in the last video either. Rear wheel well, uh, rear rear well, rear rear well. Okay. Let's move on from there. Uh, the power then comes out of here and it goes into three 15 amp breakers. Three 15 amp breakers should be enough for your overland rig. Uh, you can have a hot plate on one, water heater on another, and then one for all of your outlets around the vehicle. And remember, you can daisy chain three or four different outlets together onto one 110 15 amp breaker. So this is your entire uh, AC side of things. Now the one thing that we do add on here is we add the Victron uh, multi-control. Now the only thing this does is if you have this underneath your bed or in a hard to reach place, from this device here very simply you can turn the device on, off, charger only, or you can dial down the amount of power or how hard you are charging offshore power. How hard you're char That doesn't even make sense. Can you scratch that out of there? It sounds stupid. You can't charge hard. You can charge slowly or fast with low voltage or higher. Scratch that too. It's <laughs> low volt, low amperage or high amperage. Okay. Now, why would you want to dial this down a bit? Let's just say you're going over to grandma's house to charge and you have to park 30 feet away from the plug, then she's only got a regular 15 amp plug. Well, you know that when you extend um, extension cords, extend extension cords, also, I haven't had enough coffee today, Kenny. I'm blaming this on the coffee. If you're charging with an extension cord over a long distance, it has a tendency to heat up. In that case, you're just gonna dial this thing down so your extension cord will not heat up. And if you're then if you're going to go to an RV park somewhere and you're going to use a traditional 30 amp RV plug, you can dial this thing back up so you can charge as fast as you uh, you want off this guy. So it just gives you a little bit of flexibility. And if you're lazy like me, you don't want to have to pull all of your bikes out of your bed, uh, all of your stuff, uh, just to be able to turn this thing on and off. I don't actually use my inverter all that often inside my vehicle, so most of the time I tend to just leave it off. Now that's the 110 system. If we go over here to the DC side of things, we did AC. Now we're going to go to DC. Got to start with the AC and then DC. And remember folks, this is the exact same thing as our original kit, the Wanderer. So we have one 200 amp hour battery. You can exp expand that two, four, six, eight, or with 330 batteries, 330 times four. Kenny will do the math, put it right up here. Bang, bang. It's up there. Okay, it goes from there into an a &L fuse holder. As I said in the last video, we originally were using Class T fuses. Very hard to get right now, so we are not using those at the moment. It goes into an a &L. It goes into a marine grade on-off switch. Now, this is not a cheap chintzy on-off switch. When you feel this thing in your hand, it's built tough. It's built rugged. It is more expensive, but for something like this, you do want to have quality components. These are the best components that you can buy anywhere on the market today that I know of. And uh, that gives you a little bit of uh, resiliency, okay? And it makes you feel good about yourself when you do open up your electrical cabinet inside and it's all blue in there. You're like, I got the best, okay? And you know that. So it goes from the on-off switch 
Next to the on off switch down here, Kenny, right over here to the side is we have our smart shunt. This is a Bluetooth app, which allows you to check all of your voltage and amperage right off here to the negative side. So if you had more batteries here, they would lead up to here and then go up to there. Okay. On off switch goes into your Lynx distributor. This gives you actually five ports. Four of them actually have fuses on them. This is upside down, but remember there's a sticker so you can make this right side up. This is just for display purposes. It goes up here into an Orion 12, 12, 30. This allows you to charge off your alternator at 30 amps. You can stack this together with two to get you 60, very easy. Right over here, we have an MPPT 130. This is an, enables you to charge from solar panels goes into a breaker first, down from your solar powders. This basically gives you the flexibility to just turn on and off your solar panels if you're doing anything on top or if you want to make sure the rest of your system is working the way that you intended it to. These are all Bluetooth devices right here. Remember inside your Lynx distributor, these lights will tell you if everything is fused correctly or if you've blown a fuse. It also comes up right up here into a standard 220 amp battery protect. Now this can go off to your rooftop DC powered air conditioner. Hopefully it's a nomadic if you're cruising in style. Then it goes up to a 100 amp breaker for your, uh, your 12 gang fuse box right up here by Blue Sea. This is where you're gonna connect all of your light, water pump, anything's along those lines. This is just a very simple thing to use to make that happen. Now you can remember, you can put this down inside your uh, electrical bay. I actually tend to put it up top so that I can see it. And if I have a problem with something, I can always make it very easy to check. You gotta remember that if stuff that you have to get to so often, you don't wanna bury it inside your electrical system. A few things to point out here, a few options for you. You'll see most customers using, well, actually a lot of people aren't using them, but I think it's a good addition. For every single battery that we sell at Nomadic Cooling, we also sell a terminal uh, breaker right here, or fuse, whatever you wanna call it. This is the bus version right here, and it really will protect your battery in case you accidentally drop a, a wrench or something inside your system and arc the whole thing out. Uh, so for every battery, you're going to get one of these as well that you're going to put on the positive terminal here. Now you'll see here the way that we have this set up currently, all of the ancillary power that goes to power the BMS or to power your smart shunt all comes to right here. Now these use very little power, but if you are using or if you store your system for a winter or for long periods of time inside, you may wanna actually move all of these small power wires and move them to the other side of the on off switch so that if you turn off the on off switch, you actually turn off everything else as well so that you will actually shut down the parasitic loads if you're leaving it for a long period of time. This is really up to you. We've seen it done both ways. I can tell you most of the time right here works just fine. But uh, we, I have had the instances where I've left a van in the showroom for three or four months at a time to come back and find extremely dead batteries because of these small parasitic loads. But wait, as they say, there's more. Over here at Nomadic Cooling, what we really want to focus on is air conditioning and providing manufacturing and selling the best air conditioners on the market. We basically sell Victron electrical systems because some people uh, are using electrical components that do not allow the air conditioner to run optimally. And we've seen that in a lot of situations where, you know, the, the electrical system is wrong, so the air conditioner doesn't work correctly. Now, most people in that scenario will just say it's the air conditioner's fault. We ask for pictures of the electrical system, and then it's very easy to determine that the electrical system is causing the problem. We are selling this stuff. You know, obviously it's great to sell things, but we are primarily selling it and getting the education out there because we want people to be using the best and safest electrical systems, period. With that being said, we have struggled for a long period of time if we should be selling all of the wires and the accoutrements, the brass fittings, everything you need to make an electrical system. And the reason we've struggled is because it is more expensive for us to bag this stuff up 
and to sell it to you than it is probably for you to find it someplace out in the internet. Customers have told us that uh, it's just easier to click and buy everything altogether. I pretty much agree with you with that. If you are interested in getting your complete electrical system with all of your wires, this option is given to you at checkout at Nomadic Cooling. And it's just for your convenience. Uh, if you get it from us or don't get it from us, we just want you guys to have the best electrical equipment uh, on the market. The Roamer by Nomadic Coolant in conjunction with Victron is the best, simplest electrical system you can get. It does AC plus DC. It's not overly complicated. This does not have all the bells and whistles of a touchscreen display. This is simple to install. I'm going to say simple, but dial it down. It's probably I give it two out of four stars for how difficult it is to install. With that being said, this is the least amount that you need inside of your vehicle to go from AC to DC and from DC back to AC. Guys, if you want to go further in comfort with AC and DC inside your Overland rig, do me a favor, head on to nomadiccooling.com.